My name is Dr. Alicia Bork, and I am the Chief Student Affairs Officer at Loyola University, New Orleans. Welcome to the Student Affairs Zoom panel session for parents and families. My team and I are happy to be with you today, and we hope that you and your loved ones are enjoying the summer months. Before we get started with the panel, I'd like to outline a few Zoom rules. Um, first of all, out of respect for the panelists and the desire to share as much information as possible, all participants except for our panelists are asked to remain muted. Participants will be able to ask questions via the chat function. And so feel free to um, add questions to the chat as we're talking it's likely that we'll be able to answer those questions in real time. Um, so please don't hesitate to put those questions in the chat. We'll answer as many questions as possible in the time that we have allotted this evening. But as a follow-up, all of the participants on this call will receive an email with a link to the recording and the name and contact information for each panelist. Just in case you have any further questions or if there's a question that you'd like to ask one or more of us privately. This recording will also be housed on the Student Affairs website. Please note that this panel session is being recorded and will be posted on our website, as I mentioned. So as such, and for the privacy of your student, please refrain from sharing identifiable information about your student in the chat. And if you, um, shared in, the, in any other way. Thank you so much for your cooperation. As we get started this evening, I wanted to share a few points to set the foundation for our time together this evening. My colleagues and I have been working excitedly over the past few months to ensure that we have systems and operations in place to open safely and in accordance with current CDC and local guidelines. We're planning on a staggered move-in starting Monday, August 16th, and classes are to, to get started on August 23rd. For the safety of our students and our community, we are requiring all students to be vaccinated for COVID. We will have, or we are accepting a few exceptions to the vaccination, which are only for medical, religious, or philosophical reasons. Your students should have received uh, numerous communication from us regarding how to upload vaccine records or exemption information. If your student has not um, uploaded their information yet, there's still time, but we ask you to do that as soon as possible so that we can open as safely as possible. We also will have several rooms set aside for COVID positive cases and for those awaiting testing. And so for those students who will be in quarantine or isolation, we'll do our best to provide support. However, I do encourage you to have conversations with your student about the reality of what that situation will look like for your student and uh, family. So now getting into our panel. For this panel today, each departmental representative will share a few minutes worth of information regarding their area. And then once we get through our panelist introduction information, we'll uh, engage more in depth in our question answer session. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Asia Wong, director of our University Counseling Center and Student Health Services. Asia? Hi, y'all. My name is Asia Wong. I am a licensed clinical social worker in the state of Louisiana. I always tell parents that it's my team's job to help your students stay happy, healthy, and well. So I oversee two departments, the University Counseling Center and Student Health. University Counseling Center is located directly above the Orleans Room, that's our dining hall, and we provide free confidential mental health services to all currently enrolled students. Um, we have a really supportive community, community around mental health, very open community. We see between 20 and 25% of students in any given year. Um, and unsurprisingly, uh, the majority of those are freshmen um, who are handling that transition to college. So if you have a student who's already 
in counseling or you know if they start the school year you notice that they might need some help give us a call we're here to help downstairs underneath the orleans room uh, student health services think of this as your kids urgent care slash primary care slash student nurse on campus so we're there to help them with illnesses and injuries, including COVID, um, as well as provide that warm, supportive environment as they transition to adulthood and deal with the normative bumps and scrapes along the way. Uh, student Health Clinic uh, does take insurance for payment. Um, if you have signed up your student for the Student Health Insurance Plan, all services in clinic are covered by that and you would not see any co-pays or anything like that. Hi everyone, my name is Brett Simpson. I'm the athletic director here at Loyola and to piggyback from what Asia said, I also run the university sports complex. So we, in keeping our students well, we like to encourage them uh, to come to the gym. And essentially we have a little something for everyone in athletics and the university and sports complex. Um, for our general student body, we have uh, cardio equipment, strength training, group X uh, exercise classes, fitness classes. We, off we also off offer personal training. Uh, we have a swimming pool, racquetball courts, and basketball courts. So a lot to do for our students to, to get some exercise and stay well. Um, from the athletics perspective, we have 18 sports, and I always like to read them off my list because I forget them every now and then. That's bad when I forget someone uh, a sport, especially when their students' parents is, is in the audience. So we have men's and women's cross country, volleyball, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's swimming, competitive cheer and dance, baseball, men's and women's tennis, men's and women's golf, and then men's and women's indoor and outdoor track and field. Uh, we're excited about the Wolfpack. We're coming off one of our most exciting and successful years in Loyola history. We had top 10 finishes in the NAIA in women's golf, dance, and men's basketball. Um, but more importantly, we're, we're uh, thrilled about our, our student athletes, our true student athletes, and uh, all 18 of our teams won NAIA Scholar Team Awards, uh, which means each team had over a 3.0 team GPA. So we're excited about that. Lastly, um, student employment in our department is, is something that we offer and we do have work study positions that our students uh, do qualify for through federal work study program, but we also have other pay positions. We uh, have building managers, which are our student leaders who help run the complex. Um, lifeguards, we always need lifeguards. So if your student is certified to be a lifeguard, um, we'd love to have them come our way. If they're interested in being certified, being a lifeguard, we can help with that as well. Uh, and then we have other customer service uh, assistants as well as uh, game day staff that help in the athletic, with the athletic team. So uh, excited to welcome you all to Loyola uh, and we'll be happy to answer any questions uh, later on. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Chris Rice and I am the Director of Residential Life. Um, in residential life, we manage uh, the housing for all first year and upperclassmen students. First year students are housed in Beaver Hall and in Buttig Hall. Our upperclassmen students are housed in Buttig, Carrollton, Cabra, and Founders. Each community in our residential life uh, in residential life has a resident assistant. This is an upperclassmen student who we hire and train to support our students and the as they are transitioning in their progress through college. Um, each building will also have a master's level community director and our central staff will be myself, my associate director, Jay Davis, and our office manager, Tony Breland. We also manage mail, uh, that's not US post office. Uh, so package deliveries and other, uh, you know, other, uh, so other packages deliveries outside of USPS will come to our office and we will, uh, students will be able to pick them up at a central location. Um, if your students um, are looking for employment as well, we have desk staff and office assistants with work study and budget employment. Um, and finally, we'll be doing programming in the residence halls to support and aid your student as they transition uh, in and throughout college uh, and getting connection, finding themselves and really being a part of the Loyola community. So if you have any questions about residential life, we're happy to answer anything.
Uh, good afternoon. My name is Charlie Casual. I'm with Loyola Dining. Uh, we're looking forward to the students being back at our dining facilities this fall. We have six retail locations, including Starbucks and a Smoothie King, as well as a C store that is fully stocked uh, for convenience goods and any items that the students may need in their uh, stay on campus. Um, <clears throat> our dining hall features anything from pizza, salad bars, burgers, um, to comfort foods, um, as well as soups and simple servings in the my zone. Uh, we have a campus nutritionist to help out with any dietary needs that any students may need. Uh, we have a full slate of great events planned out for this semester for all the students, and uh, we're excited to have them back. And thank you. We're looking forward to uh, feeding the pack. Thank you, Charlie. Hello, everyone. My name is Dale O'Neill. I serve as the Director of Student Life and Ministry here at Loyola. Um, forgive me for having my camera off today. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. However, um, since this is our one time we get to speak to y'all over the summer, I wanted to make sure I was um, in attendance to do so. So thank you for your grace. Um, Student Life and Ministry is basically a one-stop shop for co-curricular engagement on campus. So on the student life side, we oversee campus recreation. So that includes intramurals and club sports, um, as well as outdoor excursions, campus-wide events. So we typically have about two events a week and um, free of charge for students. There is no reason for your student to get, to, to get bored. Um, there's always something to do on campus, whether it's an outdoor movie night or we host an event annually called snow where we bring out tons of snow for students to play in on the front lawn um, of Loyola. A lot of our students are from the south and this may be the first time that they have ever seen snow. So we do um, programming like that. We also oversee commuter services. So if your student does not live on campus, we wanna make sure that they still feel connected to Loyola. And um, so we have a commuter lounge, we have commuter assistants, which are upperclassmen commuter students um, who mentor all, uh, an incoming first year commuter student. So if you have an incoming first year commuter student, they will automa automatically be assigned a commuter assistant. And then various on-campus programming just for commuters. Um, we also have fraternity and sorority life on campus, which takes up about 16% of our student population is involved with Greek life. I'm one of the advisors for that, so I'm happy to answer any of your questions. We have four um, Greek councils on campus. Also, our office oversees new student programs. Um, so your student should have completed an online orientation program over the summer. The deadline for that is actually um, before they have to complete before move in. Um, it is a wealth of information. Um, while it is required for incoming students, um, I also highly suggest that um, parents and caregivers review it as well. It is not required for you, but it is so much wonderful information. Um, I think you will really enjoy it and appreciate it. Um, we also, a part of new student programs, uh, oversee Wolfpack Welcome, which begins five days before the first day of school. So it um, begins on Wednesday and goes Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It is required for all incoming new students. Um, we do a range of social programming and also educational programming about policies and procedures on campus. If you are moving your child into the residence hall during Wolfpack Welcome, we do have some select parent and caregiver programming as well for you to participate in. Um, and we should have our Wolfpack Welcome guide um, schedule on our website by the end of the week. And you will also get it in your inbox in the next couple of weeks in our weekly um, e-communications. Our office also oversees about 130 student organizations so again, no reason for your student to get bored. Um, we have uh, so many of them. And if for some odd reason, there's nothing your student wants to join, which would be odd because we have so many, I'm happy to work with your student to create a, a new student organization. And then on the ministry side, we oversee social justice education, um, Christian life communities, which are small faith sharing groups that meet on a weekly basis. Um, if your student is interested in completing the sacraments, um, we provide sacramental classes and various faith formation um, opportunities. 
Our office also oversees Ignacio Volunteers, which is a immersion program. So we do a local immersion program, but also we do two immersion programs to Jamaica um, each year. And then we also do various community service opportunities. So our student organization called Loyola University Community Action Program and hosts weekly community service programs throughout the city of New Orleans. We do various retreats. We have a first year retreat. We have an awakening retreat each semester. We have a junior and senior retreat. Um, so wonderful opportunities for your students um, to get to meet other students and explore their faith. And then we also provide worship um, on campus. Um, so we have our 9 p.m. student mass that's very popular. Um, but if your student does not um, identify as Catholic, we wanna make sure that we are helping with their faith formation as well. So we do provide various interfaith programs. And then we can also connect your student to houses of worship throughout the city. And then a couple last things, our office oversees Iggy's Cupboard, which is our on-campus food pantry. Um, it's confidential and free uh, for all faculty, staff, and students. We provide frozen food and non-perishable food items, as well as school supplies. Um, and that, again, is located in the lower level of the Dana Student Center. Lastly, our office oversees the Dana Student Center as well. And in the Dana Student Center is our bookstore. Um, Mari, who is our bookstore ma manager, is actually on vacation this week, so he couldn't join us today. Um, but I will provide the bookstore website and contact information in the chat in case you, you have any additional questions. Thank you so much. And good evening, everybody. My name is Walter Jones with At The Student Health, and I am the account manager working directly with Loyola University. And we are very excited this year to be partnering with Loyola and providing your student with a very robust health insurance plan that covers your students throughout the U.S. as well as traveling abroad. Uh, there's a lot of information on our website pertaining to the plan. I encourage you to review the uh, plan information. If you have any questions, you can reach out to our customer service team that is dedicated to student health. I will be providing the link to the website in the chat. So uh, welcome and uh, looking forward to a good year. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for that information. Um, I also wanted to share that as part of um, my office, um, I also manage um, our behavioral intervention team, our Title IX, and our student conduct. And so um, if after you have reviewed all of the information there on our website regarding those areas, you still have questions, feel free to uh, send an email to me or reach out and I'll be happy to provide um, further detail. And so now we'll open up for Q&A. So I see a few things have come across the chat and some of them have been answered. And so I'll just read through a couple of these. The first question is related to the vaccine, asking for an example of the philosophical reasons uh, for not getting vaccinated and also details about uh, residential life and what those uh, processes will, will look like. And so um, personal and philosophical reasons are um, what students are presenting as their reason for not um, receiving the vaccine. And that really um, comes in all different, uh, a variety of reasons. Um, however, if a phil philosophical exemption is the route that a student wants to take, they do need to explain that reason in a 300 word essay that can be uploaded to um, our vaccine portal via the link that they receive in their email. Um, the essays re reviewed by approval uh, by the public health team and we will uh, not be exempting unvaccinated students in any way or excluding unvaccinated students in any way um, in, the, in the residence halls. Um, another question here is in regards to the notice that the city of New Orleans has brought back a mask advisory. Uh, will students, regardless of vaccination, be required to wear masks on campus? 
Um, so we're going to follow all local regulations. Um, since the announcement was just made maybe an hour or so ago, I need to circle with um, our public relations and our president to make sure that we're um, getting the right communications out to um, our campus community. So we'll be in touch uh, early tomorrow morning with that information. With regard to the sushi restaurant, yes, sushi will be provided to our students uh, in the coming year. Um, when students are moved in during their time slot, are parents not allowed to stay on campus to help out miscellaneous items that might be needed? Chris, do you want to speak to um, parent involvement during move-in? Yeah, so um, parents are allowed during move-in. Uh, we don't have a restriction on when they have to uh, exit, so as you don't get like a two-hour window. You can stay the rest of the day, so you can go shopping and those kind of things. Um, we uh, because of construction around the city, we did just have to change a little bit of our move-in procedures. So we're going to send an email out uh, to students uh, early next week, uh, as we've just been able to finalize that. But um, we encourage parents to come and help and uh, get your student all settled and make sure they start everything off right. Chris, I'm probably going to stick with you for a minute, yeah. so you might want to just stay unmuted. Um, you just noted about when, how they'll find out um, move in, correct? Yes, and then um, during assignments, your student signs up for a move in slot. Um, if they've already gotten their assignment email, they should have, you know, it's about the third paragraph down, logged in and signed up for a one time. Uh, if they were a late applicant uh, or have been recently assigned, uh, those emails are going out by Friday. Uh, so they'll be able to sign up for slots. We still have plenty left. Um, and so if they have forgotten what time and date they signed up for, please email reslife at loino.edu, um, our main page, and we'll be able to assist them. Thank you. And Chris, can you speak to the loft bed question? What's the procedure to get a request? In? Yeah, so we do not allow loft beds unless they're a university loft bed. Our odd rooms in Beaver Hall, uh, many of them are tripled with furniture. Um, and we'll send information out about those uh, early next week, but they are, those have loft beds. If you're in a double in Beaver Hall, uh, we, you, those beds can be bunked and we can provide pens for that, but we do not allow brought or built-in loft beds for safety and liability reasons. Great, thank you. I just wanna remind our participants to please mute. If you aren't on mute, I'd really appreciate that. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Okay. Um, so participants, you'll notice um, as we're uh, talking that panelists are um, putting uh, links into the chat. So if you wanna open those up in your browser so that you can review them at a later date, I, I would encourage that. Um, Chris, there's also a question about roommate conflict um, and fit. What is the process for change requests? Yeah, so we freeze room changes the first two weeks and the last two weeks of the semester so that we can do occupancy checks and prepare for closing. Um, but we are a relatively free open room change uh, during the rest of that period. Um, should your student um, feel the need to change rooms, um, they can talk to one of our community directors and they can walk them through the process. Um, the students uh, will be able to, to select a space that is available the, um, uh, based on who has openings in their space and then room change with that. We do keep first year students in first year areas and upperclassmen students in upperclassmen areas. Um, one thing we do ask is a lot of times students, um, when they're struggling with a roommate, a uh, big um, issue is communication and that if they're experiencing frustration, a lot of times they haven't communicated that with each other. And so our RAs or resident assistants or community directors or myself and the associate director can coach and help a student through kind of how to manage that communication. Um, so it doesn't get to the boiling point of where you're, you need to change a room and hopefully we can manage, um, <clears throat> manage those, um, you know, without having to do that. And we can set up roommate agreements and roommate contracts and get everyone settled. Um, so, so learning how to communicate frustrations is an important part of um, uh, becoming an adult and that burgeoning adulthood, and we can assist and coach the students through that. Great. 
Um, Chris, can you talk about the Bed Bath & Beyond partnership um, as well as shipment? Yeah, so I'm going to put an address in the chat link to everyone to where you can ship your uh, items. Uh, we ask that you limit it to two boxes, um, 38 by 48 uh, inches uh, cubed. Um, we ask that so that uh, our staff are able to deliver it to the rooms. Anything we receive by uh, August 2nd, 3rd or 4th, we will pre-deliver to your rooms. Anything after that early arrival window, we will hold in the central location to be picked up when our mail room is open. Um, okay, so, that, so that's mailing. What was the other question, Alicia? I got off track, I'm sorry, everyone. No, 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 you're fine. The other question, um was Bed Bath & Beyond partnership? Yes. Um, so we have a partnership with uh, University and Student Services, our early, so that's a company we, they can pay to move their items in. But they can order through Bed Bath & Beyond linens through uh, that company and it will be delivered directly to here and placed into the room and that will not count as a large box for them. Unfortunately, Bed Bath & Beyond ended their partnership with the universities directly uh, two years ago ahead of the pandemic and um, hasn't reopened that. So I apologize that uh, the tour guides gave wrong information. We'd love to have a partnership, but they, they canceled it on us. So um, yeah, so if you, if you have individual questions about other places to kind of get stuff from, please email uh, reslife at and we can direct you where. Um, we have local stores that can do pickup um, and also delivery. Great, thank you, Chris. Um, question about the preparations for future COVID variants. Um, so we have a public health team here at Loyola that meets twice a week um, in terms of reviewing guidelines, updating policy, um, reviewing policy, and we will just continue meeting um, to ensure that we're as fully prepared and uh, following all uh, local, state, uh, federal guide guidance, um, particularly keeping watch of the CDC. Um, there's another question about whether or not students will have shared dining hall privileges with Tulane this fall. Um, so that's still to be determined with the Delta var variant. Uh, we need just a little bit more time to make that decision. Um, we're hoping and all of us want that to happen, um, but we need to press pause on that decision right now. And as soon as that decision is made, uh, we will make sure to communicate that out to everyone who needs to know. Chris, can students stay on campus the night that they move in? Yes, students can stay on campus the night that they move in. Once they check in, we assume that they are occupying their space every night. Great. And did you answer the question about how lofting will happen in a double in Beaver? Uh, we don't allow lofting in doubles. Uh, we can bunk the Got beds, it. but no, uh, no outside or external lofts. Thank you. And then question about international students being housed over long holidays, such as Thanksgiving. So we do not close down during Thanksgiving. Um, we will offer programming and a Thanksgiving meal during that time. Um, we do close over the winter holiday, so we will need students to plan accordingly. Uh, but uh, that is the one time that we will close to the academic year. Um, if they're looking to stay over summer, they need to fill out a separate summer contract, which will include interim housing. Thank you. Next question is about facilities available for storm shelter. Um, I'm assuming that that is in reference to hurricanes. Um, and the facilities that are available depend on wind speed. And so in the residence halls, we can um, house students for a ride out situation um, if the winds um, aren't predicted to get over a certain speed. And if they are, then we have the opportunity to house uh, our shelter in place right out um, in our sports complex. And we're at the ready right now, um, getting ready to um, prep the building and ensure it is ready for a ride out situation. Um, Brett, there's a question about students having access to the Tulane, the Tulane gym. Alicia, you kind of cut out on me, uh, but I saw Oh, that. I'm sorry, Brett. Yeah, the two legion. Um, no, they do not. And then can we set up a school tour before 
move in. Um, yes, I believe so. Um, I would say to contact admissions and the admissions office should be able to get you set up with coming in for a tour. You know, this has been happening all summer. Um, in case a roommate has a vaccine exemption, can we ask for a room change? Chris, we already talked about the change process. And so I'm, I'm, that would fall in line with making, making those sort of decisions as roommates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we will um, allow, you know, allow for a room change. If you're looking for it now, we are 100% full. Um, and we're making adjustments as space becomes available. If you would like to do a request before moving, you can email reslife at loino.edu requesting that, but we cannot guarantee that a room change can occur. After move in, um, we would need to follow our normal room change process. So meeting with the community director after the first two weeks and then um, moving to whatever space, you know, choosing between the space we have available. Thank you, Chris, staying on. Is there a different closing date for in December for international students? So we closed the Friday of finals week and I apologize for not having the date on the top of my head. I'll look it up in a second and put it in the chat. Um, if an international student has a later flight, like on the Saturday or the Sunday, we will work with them on an individual basis, but they will need to request an extended um, stay uh, by our December 1st deadline with multiple communications going out to the student through the month of November. Um, we cannot extend it indefinitely into several weeks into December or into January, but we couldn't do a day or two. Great, thank you. And um, it looks like we've had some questions about addresses that um, Chris has been able to respond to in terms of um, before move-in and then uh, if you have any individual questions related to uh, room assignments, Chris can assist you, provided his email address there. And then we also have the admissions visit information that's been posted to the chat for those that would like to request a tour before move in. Um, so let's see. Chris, we have our room assignment embedded. How can we find out if there's space under bed storage? Yeah, if it's the sixth floor and up, they're built-in beds, so there's no space under the beds. If it's fifth floor and below, they're modular beds. They can be raised and lowered, so there can be space under the beds. In general, the space under the beds is approximately 41 to 42 inches, depending on what area of the bed you slide under. Thank you. Another question about parents' weekend in the fall. Um, over the past couple of years, we have been trying to uh, restructure Parents Weekend to get better attendance and uh, student buy-in. And so what we have been doing is actually hosting uh, a parents-like type weekend in the spring to coincide with our homecoming. Uh, you might say homecoming in the spring. Well, that doesn't make sense. But at Loyola, we do not have a football team. However, we have lots of spring sports including basketball. And so we uh, make sure to have some really great programming uh, with and for our students during that time. And so this year, um, Family Weekend will not, or Parents Weekend will not be held in the fall. Um, however, I would encourage you, our festivals are coming back, um, hopefully coming back. Uh, this October, we're gonna have Jazz Fest. And so that would be a lovely, wonderful time to maybe visit the city, visit your student or students. Um, so I encourage you to look at that schedule and keep on top of that. Um, another question, during Wolfpack Welcome for new first years after move-in, how full will, the, will their daily schedule be? Uh, will students who move in on Wednesday have time to get any last minute items or go off campus that weekend or time to explore city with family? Dale, do you wanna take that? Sure, happy to. Um, I will tell you that the schedule is pretty full. Um, we do that just because there's a lot of information we need to provide to them. Um, we do have large breaks for meals, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we do um, suggest that 
students and their families can go explore the city during that time um, and try new restaurants and then to run any errands that need to be ran. Um, we actually uh, will we have been working with some restaurants in the city that are providing discounts to Loyola students um, to try their food, which is really wonderful. Um, but we will have the, the full schedule on our website and um, by the end of the day on Friday, it is pretty full, um, but they but you can look through it and find some time to run some errands and, and explore um, some of the local restaurants. Thank you, Dale. Chris, did you want to mention anything about the shuttles that we do have on campus just to give give our participants an idea? Yeah. So working with our Loyola Police Department, we are setting up a shuttle schedule that will go from uh, the Broadway campus to the main campus, but they also do shuttles um, at specific days and times to local area um, shopping establishments. Um, the grocery store they're going to go to is the Rouse's down Ferret Street. It's a brand new grocery store, so it's really close. Um, and then they will also be going to uh, Walmart on a weekly schedule. Um, we've just met last week to finalize it. And so as soon as they have finalized the shuttle date and times for those events, it's going to post to our transportation website. And we will make sure that all um, students living on campus receive that um, as an email early on uh, in the school year so they know um, you know, what options they have available to get rides to and from the shuttles. LUPD will provide uh, rides for uh, one-off kind of occasions for things. You just have to work with them and communicate with them. And if their drivers are available, they will uh, work to meet your student needs. Thank you, Chris. Um, there was a question for Asia here about mental health counseling. And she posted uh, the link to our counseling services on campus, so feel free to take a look there in your browser. And y'all, if your students uh, want to start now remote, tell them to give us a call. We'll, we'll meet with them so they are already acquainted with their counselor before they even get here. Great. Chris, can you help out with um, the location of where to post the personal evacuation plan? Yeah, so university hurricane plans uh, for all students will go through Laura and then residential students will have an application made available to them on August 1st and residents and we ask that they complete that by their move in date letting us know what their personal evacuation plan is. If they don't complete it, we will follow up with them during the move in process and um, ensure that we get that information. If you have specific questions regarding an individual uh, evacuation plan, uh, we'll have staff members who can answer questions and help because I know it is a um, uh, confusing and maybe so scary for those who aren't in, used to being in the hurricane uh, area. So I understand that. Ooh, Chris, you almost uh, substituted vaccination plan for evacuation plan. I did, uh, to too many one. plans right now. <laughs> Lots of good plans. Um, Dale, do you want to get take the question about um, students getting their books before they arrive or during check-in? I think that depends on the student's uh, class schedule and whether or not they receive their syllabus. Yeah, so students are able to go um, online to the to through Laura to see um, what books are needed. Um, if they go and see their schedule, there should be posted on that um, what books are needed, and they can um, start putting in their quest with a bookstore for those textbooks. And then during Wolfpack Welcome, we do have time for them to go to the bookstore and pick them up. Typically, the bookstore is not open on the weekends, but during Wolfpack Welcome, it will be. Thank you. Um, a question about micro fridges for early move in students, Chris, do you have an answer for that? Yeah, so our micro fridge install is scheduled for the 12th and the 13th. So anyone arriving before that, uh, will have to wait for that to uh, be, in, be arrived, but they will deliver it and install it in the room on those dates. Um, unfortunately, we can't get them here sooner um, as they're installing at other campuses. So that's uh, the time frame we're able to get. Thank you. Dale, we've got some interest in parent schedule during Wolfpack weekend, Wolfpack welcome. Could you please share a, a bit of information about where they can find the schedule? 
Sure, so this is new for this year. Typically in the past, it's students only, um, but we have created some programming for parents and caregivers during Wolfpack Welcome. Um, we will post the Wolfpack Welcome schedule um, by the end of the day on Friday on our Wolfpack Welcome website. And this will include both the student schedule and the parent schedule. You will also get it in your email next week. Thank you, Dale. Um, Chris, it looks like you answered the dimensions question in the chat. Um, Asia, do you wanna to speak just a bit to counseling modality and prescriptions in the health center? Absolutely. So um, if you see that my attention was slightly divided, it was in response to the new mask advisory, which uh, my team knew was likely coming through. We have been doing both in person and remote um, and doing unmasked with when both people are vaccinated. The new mask advisory we will be doing in person with masks or remote, we do have Zoom rooms in our suite as well, so that uh, all through the pandemic, even if you could not physically be in the room with your counselor, you could at, wave at them before you went and saw them on their little computer screen. So we'll do whatever is safe for our population. Um, in terms of pharmacy, there's not a, a pharmacy on campus, but there is Two Lanes Pharmacy, which is a walking distance, and Castellon's Pharmacy, which offers delivery. Um, I'm going to post the link for Castellon's because if, you, if when you're dropping off your student, you wanted to get an account set up there, it's a wonderful option so that when your child has the flu and isn't feeling great, their meds can just come to their res hall and they can just pick them up. Excellent, thank you, Asia. And we had another question about the micro fridge. And so uh, Chris went ahead and uh, posted the link in the chat about um, how to order. So that is there for folks to view. All right. So we've got a little bit of time left and um, Asia just uh, posted where to find information about um, how to get prescription meds delivered to campus. All right, I will just wait a moment if others have questions for us. And we come back to campus day after move in to bring extra items needed. Yes, <laughs> no, they can come back. No, no problems. Um, just be aware we have, you know, like three to 400 people moving in every day. So you are going to come back into kind of that process. So um, our big thing is we're going to ask students and parents um, when they're not in their active unloading zone for that two hour period, which is going to be the first floor of fret, they're going to need to park in an upper floor of the West Road garage. So floors three and up um, to ensure that we have the available space for those who are actively unloading their cars. Chris, there's a note about uh, the fridge microwave. Um, those must be ordered. They do not come with the room. Yeah, they're not set in the rooms. They do have to be ordered. The only rooms that come with uh, refrigerators are our apartments, and those are upperclassmen areas. Thank you. Charlie, did you want to speak just a little bit to our dining hall hours? Our dining hall hours are um, on our website as well as our Facebook page. Um, the dining hall is open seven days a week. Um, they do serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner Monday through Friday, and Saturday and Sundays are a brunch and dinner option. Uh, we also have retail locations that are open through the course of that seven days. Uh, we, we will have something open from 7 a.m. till 2 a.m. Um, if it's outside of the dining um, hours, they do have the opportunity to use their wolf bucks for those locations. Um, so we will have things options available for them. We'll also have Grubhub set up for them. Um, so we do have Grubhub pickup options at uh, each location that we have on campus as well. Thank you. Um, and Chris is responding directly to the um, question about how to sign up for 
a move in time. Um, if anyone else is having difficulties or maybe has some questions about that, um, assistance with the process, as Chris notes, um, you can absolutely email reslife at loino.edu and we'll get someone to provide some assistance to you. Thanks everybody for all your wonderful questions. I'm so grateful for your participation and your engagement. Really, really, really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Um, I've got a question about a schedule for shuttle and destinations. Um, Chris, I'll volley that to you. Yeah, so they're still finalizing it. Um, they're incorporating the destinations into their a uh, routine schedule. We, again, we met uh, last week to, to process through that with uh, our, our transportation team and the Loyola Police Department staff. Um, once it is finalized, we're going to update the website and I will email all residential students to ensure they, they have the link so they're not um, uh, left unawares. Um, so we'll, we're going to take care of that for them. Absolutely. Um, and then Walter or Asia, there's a question about insurance card um, receipt. When when a student will receive the insurance card, I can't recall the detail of that. Insurance cards will be available tomorrow online. Um, like everybody else, we're going green, so we're not printing uh, hard ID cards. However, if you are one of those diehards, you can still get one by contacting our customer service department. And I did post the link directly to the Get the ID card on the website. Perfect, Walter, thank you. Um, Chris, in terms of the personal evacuation plan, can you repost the uh, page where we need that information? Yeah, it's through their Laura. Um, I'll work on that and get it in the link. And then the residence account uh, where they fill out their housing application for on-campus students. We're going to have an application live for them on August 1st and 2nd. So they'll need to complete before moving, but they will also complete their evacuation plan um, for residential life staff. Excellent. And then um, carts and move in, Chris. Yeah, so we will have some carts available um, that will be able to be checked out. Um, I would encourage uh, parents to bring dollies, whatever else you need to move as the, the carts always go fast. We do have a time limit on those to try to recycle them as much as possible. Um, but for expedience sake, you may wanna bring your own um, transportation equipment. Uh, so they're not having to, to be dependent on our carts. Our carts are large uh, blue transportation bins. They're wonderful. They can hold up to 450 pounds. Um, we just have a limited number of supply of those. Thank you, Chris. And similar to um, move in, um, sorry, I'm have a little background noise there. Um, similar to the cart situation, I would also recommend that um, you all pack your masks as you come down to New Orleans. Um, it might be that where you live, um, you don't have a ma mask mandate or a mask advisory. Um, so I would strongly encourage that you bring those with you for use uh, when you're here on campus or in the city. Um, and then there's a question, Chris, about an RA in buddy call during the day or evening. Yeah, so when um, our office, so during move-in, we're going to be staffed 24-7. Um, but after move-in, uh, when the main office is open, we ask that we direct all questions to there. Um, but when we are closed, we have multi-tiers of on-call staff. Um, so each building will have a student staff on call. Then we will have a professional entry level staff on call. So our community directors uh, rotate as second tier. Um, and then myself and the associate director rotate as third tier. So uh, for anything you need, we have uh, multiple ways that it can go up and multiple people to assist. So um, the RA on call number will be posted. Um, so your students, um, please reach out to them for anything. They're here to help. And if they need assistance, they can call up. 
Chris, I think this is another question to you about winter break ending and asking when are students supposed to come back? I'm assuming that's um, back to the residence hall. Um, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm pulling up our calendars. Give me one second. So uh, yeah. we'll be yeah, closing. I think, um, go ahead. Uh, we'll be closing December, Friday, December 17th at 5 p.m. Um, we will email all these dates out to residents and it'll be a part of their move-in packet so you have the full residential calendar. So uh, we are closing at 5 p.m. on December 17th. Um, if your student is not taking um, J-term classes, they will need to arrive on January 16th. Uh, Sunday, January 16th. If they are taking J-term classes, they would arrive on January 2nd. Thank you, Chris. Um, there's a question about arriving by air. Where should a taxi go to drop off suitcases for move-in? Um, if you give the taxi the same address that we did for mailing, um, it'll get you here and then they'll have to go through our check-in process. So they're gonna come in the entry by the Fret Street uh, garage and we're gonna email out a map with this. Um, and I'll make sure we have that address posted on that map uh, when we in email it out. Um, they'll come through the process and they can drop off the, the luggage and the roundabout where we'll be doing our drive-through move-in. Great, um, and there's a question, what is J-term? J-term is short for January term. So it is a uh, small window in between winter break and um, spring opening. So two weeks uh, in early January where students can take um, accelerated courses. And by accelerated, I mean um, more fast paced in terms of timing. Um, they're typically, or they have been, uh, Jane Tarim courses have been uh, focused on social justice and um, equity and inclusion. And so you'll get more information as we move through the fall semester about courses that are available for students to take for credit during the J term. Uh, and if a student is taking uh, J term courses, they're allowed to um, move in early in order to account for attending class. Uh, Chris, uh, another question about leaving the residence halls uh, and potential exceptions. Yeah, so contractually, the last date in the residence halls is that December 17th date. We do allow extensions for approved reasons. Um, we're going to ask a student to fill out an extension form by December 1st. They will need to provide um, like uh, flight information or those kind of things for the 18th and 19th. Uh, depending on what the reason is, there may be a $35 per day uh, fee associated with those extended stays, but we've been able to work with students on uh, travel needs. Great, Chris, thank you. I think we have time for one or two more questions if anyone has any Closing thoughts or questions, happy to field those. Um, so the recording of this video will be posted on our student affairs website. Um, so you can go to loino.edu and type in student affairs in the top right hand search uh, button and um, it'll bring you to our website where you'll be able to see this video. Um, additionally, we are going to send a link to this video to all participants so that you'll have that right in your inbox. Um, are there any restrictions as far as what can go on the wall inside the res hall room? Yeah, so um, if a res hall wall is damaged, your student may get assessed the damage fee. Um, and the most uh, often things that damage it are um, the, the strips. Um, if they're not removed correctly or they're left on for too long, we'll take off paint 
and uh, uh, within the walls. Um, the blue or white putty does leave oil and residue stains, um, so that can be an issue. Um, if you get name brand blue painter's tape, that causes the least amount of issues. Um, and so um, don't buy off brand, buy name brand. Um, it's like peanut butter. Um, <laughs> But though, that's what I would advise um, putting up uh, on the walls in the, in the beaver hall rooms, they're brick. Um, and so you can get little brick hooks for hanging things. And those are really cool. You can find those at Lowe's. Thanks, Chris. Dale, would you mind um, answering the chapel and adoration question, please? Happy to. We have our Ignatius Chapel on campus. It is in the um, lower level, I'm sorry, the first floor of a Beauvais Hall. Um, I am very excited to tell you that um, the university is breaking ground on another chapel on campus in the fall. So we're very, very excited about that. We also have a chapel on the Broadway campus as well for students to utilize. And there is weekly adoration in our Ignatius Chapel as well and various programmings throughout the week in all of our chapels. Thank you, Dale. And Chris, our, our last question is about bathroom and cleaning. Yes, throughout, throughout the summer, our cleaning staff have been turning over all the rooms. Um, we didn't have a large conference services program, so we're able to turn the rooms a lot earlier than we normally do during the summer. Um, they are currently uh, have teams sweeping the rooms again. Uh, as rooms are cleaned and settled, you can get a little bit of dust um, and those kind of things. And so they are doing spot cleaning in um, those. Um, if you have any issues with cleanliness, we will have teams on staff. Um, and so please reach out to any one of my residential life staff and we can uh, get WFF our cleaning team to come and address any issues that you have. Um, for buttock hall windows, we do not provide curtains, but there should be a um, blinds there for you. Great. So many thanks to our panelists and our participants. I think this has been a really great Zoom experience. Um, just appreciate everyone's engagement, participation. And like I said before, following this panel, participants will receive an email with the link to a recording and name and contact information for each panelist. So if you have a question that requires some privacy that you'd like to talk with, one or more of us about, and um, we're happy to answer any of those questions. So feel free to reach out to us at any time. I'd also encourage you to watch again, our orientation modules. Um, they give a little bit more in-depth information on some of today's topics. The modules are not required for parents like they are for students, but again, it gives lots of detail that we were able to scratch the surface today. Thanks to your great questions but this might just give you a little bit more um, detail that you might be looking for. And those can be found at orientation.loyno.edu. That's orientation.loyno.edu. Um, and then Dale posted the information for our Wolfpack welcome schedule for parents and families, guests. So we'd love to have you um, join some of those. Um, so again, we see parents as partners. Really appreciate your time and engagement this evening. Y'all have a great rest of the night and we'll see y'all soon. Thank you, bye-bye.